Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the 7th unit of NCRT Geography, class 7. We are going to study about the transportation method across earth and the evolution of communication and how technology have changed our lives. So, let's get started. Early humans were completely dependent on nature for their food, their clothing and their shelter. Along with time, they learned to grow crops and they even started to domesticate animals. Later on, transportation and trading were slowly developed. For human needs and convenience, they started to modify the environment. Also, people were living on caves and trees and it was their shelter. When man learned to grow crops, he realized he needed a home close to his land. So he started to build homes and to stay at a place. That is how the concept of settlement came into the picture. Early human settlements are made near river valleys because the land near river banks are fertile as it is more suitable for agriculture. Places where these buildings and settlements were built are called site. Common factors were considered by the early humans when they were choosing their ideal site location. They were looking for a suitable land, fertile soil, availability of water and the climatic condition which is favorable. As trading, commerce and manufacturing developed, the size of the settlements became larger. Now you would have understood why we have so many early civilizations on river bank. Some of the ancient civilization were Indus, Nile, Tigris and Wanghi civilization. Among them, Indus Valley civilization is one of the ancient civilization in the world. It is also said as a Harappan civilization. It was on the land of Southwest Asia that comprises the parts of modern India and Pakistan. Another civilization is Tigris civilization. It was on the Mesopotamia area which lie between river Tigris and Euphrates. Again, it was one of the oldest civilization where urban societies were developed. Likewise, Nile Valley civilization is an ancient Egyptian civilization and Wanghi civilization was an ancient Chinese civilization. In many parts of the world, civilizations were formed. Here, people began coming together into urban settlements. They had high level of culture, scientific advancements, advanced industries and their own governments. Now, coming back to settlements, we can classify a modern day settlement into permanent settlement and temporary settlement. People who live in forest, who live in hard climatic conditions, they opt for temporary settlement. Their day to day work will be more of hunting gathering also they do shifting cultivation that is the people they move to another plot when their land get abandoned also transhumans was there it is a seasonal movement of livestock in search of pasture along with the cattle people who rat them were also moving most of the today's settlements are more of a permanent settlement type people prefer to build permanent homes for staying and they live there for a longer period. We can classify an area into an urban and rural area. Likewise, we can classify its settlements into urban and rural settlement. Large cities and small towns come under urban settlement. Here, people are engaged in activities like trading, manufacturing and services. The houses that are constructed in villages are called rural settlements. And the people who live here are often engaged in activities like agriculture, fishing, forestry, crafts work and even trading. Settlements in the villages are sometimes compact or they are sometimes even scattered. Houses that are closely built near each other are said as a compact settlement. Likewise, if dwellings are spaced across the large area, we call them a scattered settlement. Scattered settlements are often seen in places where the climatic conditions are severe. For example, hilly region, dense forested area, etc. In rural areas, people often construct houses that are suitable to their environment. In places where there is a heavy rainfall, the houses are built with slanting roof. 
and places where rainfall accumulates the land during rainy season were built on raised platforms. We call them stilt houses. Stilt is a pole or a pillar. It supports the building to stand above the ground. These houses protect them from flooding. Another type of house that are seen in rural area are thick mud-walled house. It has a thatched roof and they are made of materials like straw, leaves, mud, clay and even stones. There is a dwelling in the polar region and we call them a igloo. It is a house made of ice. These houses are built by Eskimos. Eskimos are the native people of the northern circumpolar region. This region comprises the eastern Russia, northern Canada, Greenland and also Alaska which is in USA. So now we know about the settlements. But how people move from place to place? On earlier days, they walk or they use animals to carry their goods. In our country, we were using animals like donkey, mules, bullocks and camels to carry goods. Likewise, llamas are used in the regions of Andes Mountain which is in South America. Likewise, yaks are used in Tibet. On older days, foreign traders took several months to reach our country. They were either taking land or sea route to reach our land. After the invention of wheel, transportation became more lighter and more easier. With time, the modern transportation way developed, making our travel less hectic. Today, we have four major means of transport, like roadways, railways, waterways and airways. Roadway is the most convenient one for shorter distance and roads are often built on plain regions. With advancement in technology, we even construct them in hard terrains like desert, forest and even on mountainous region. Manali Leh Highway, which is on the Himalayan mountain, is one of the highest roadways in the world. Also, roads are built in the underground, we call them underpath or subway. And the one that are built over raised structures are called flyover. Also, we have numerous national and state highways in India and we even started to develop expressways. It is a golden quadrilateral that connects the major metro cities of the country. It is the largest highway project in India and it connects the cities of Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata regions. In roads, we have metalled and unmetalled road. They are also said as Paka and Kacha roads. A road that is concrete and smooth is said as a metal road and the road which is rocky and of soil are called an unmetalled road. Similar to roadway, we have good railway connections across our country. The trains are often used to carry heavy goods and it can take people to a larger distance. Also, railways are economically convenient. Invention of steam engine and industrial revolution played a huge role on speedy developments on rail sector. Today, diesel and electric engines have replaced the steam engines almost. We even have super fast trains. On plain regions, the railway network is well developed. Rail routes are also built on mountain terrains. A train from Zinning to Laza, it runs at an altitude of 4000 meter above sea level and its highest point is at 5072 meter. The Indian Railway is well developed and it is the largest railway network in Asia. Trans-Siberian Railway is the longest railway system in the world. It connects the St. Petersburg in Western Russia to Lavada Stock on the Pacific Coast. Third come Waterway. On older day, it was widely in use. Even today, we use waterways to carry heavy goods over longer distance and it is more cheaper. We can classify the waterway into inland waterway and sea route waterway. The routes of rivers and lakes, wherever the navigation is possible, we use them for inland waterway. Some examples of inland waterway are Ganga and Brahmaputra river system, Great Lakes of North America and River Nile of Africa. The sea route waterway is done on sea and ocean surface. The route is often taken when goods need to be transported from country to country and the sea route waterways are connected via ports. Some important ports around the world are Singapore port, Mumbai port in Asia, New York port, Los Angeles port etc. Finally come airway. 
it is the fastest mode of transport and it was evolved in 20th century. Airway is the most expensive transport form as fuel costs are high. Air traffic gets affected sometimes due to bad weather conditions like fog, storms, etc. Helicopters are very useful in accessing the in-depth area and during calamities they are used to rescue people. They are also used to distribute food, water and medical supplies among people. Some important airports around the world are Delhi, Mumbai, New York, London, Paris, Frankfurt and Cairo airports. At last, we are going to see about the communication. It is a process through which information is exchanged. With development in technology, we have new and faster modes of communication today. The advancement in the field of communication has brought an information revolution around the world. There are different modes of communication like newspaper, radio, television and phone systems. Information are shared across these modems, also it can educate and entertain people. As information is shared to a large mass of audience, it is called a mass media. Also, satellite and space have made the communication even faster. It helps us on oil exploration, to conduct surveys on forest cover, to locate the underground water, to find the deposits of minerals, etc. Also, they help us to forecast weather conditions and they even send us disaster warnings. We have internet facilities today through which electronic mails are transferred in seconds of time. Internet not only brings in the worldwide information into our pockets, it also made our life more comfortable. We no longer need to stand in queue to reserve tickets and to order food. Thus, we have come to an end. Hope the lesson is useful. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up and also subscribe our channel for more content. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.